Aloha. Welcome everybody to another episode of Lillian's Vegan World, coming to you live from gorgeous downtown Honolulu with the Think Tech Hawaii team of journalists. I talk about the plant-based diet and vegan lifestyle on my show. And today's show is about veganism in 2021. Why should we go vegan? So many reasons and we're going to go through them all and uh, help you understand more about why people are giving up their knives for forks, especially after the new year and uh, entering this new year of 2021. I would like to give a warm, huge mahalo and welcome to my two guests today, Vegetarian uh, Hawaii, pardon me, Vegetarian Society of Hawaii President, my dear friend, Lorraine Sakaguchi. Welcome to the show, Lorraine. Yay. I will. <laughs> it is so wonderful to finally have you on the show. Um, welcome and uh, thank you so much for taking out the time to be here. I do also would, uh, want to introduce my other awesome guest, Grace, Dr. Grace Chen O'Neill, uh, MD, MD from Honolulu. Grace, welcome to the show. Thank you. We are really looking forward to what you have to say because you are actually my first uh, medical expert on the show and I'm really excited to um, get your insight as to what all this fuss about the plant-based diet is. So we're going to just dive into it. I'm going to start with Lorraine. If you don't mind, Lorraine, just give us a quick introduction about what you do here in Hawaii. Well, uh, I'm currently serving as the president of the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii. It's an all-volunteer nonprofit organization uh, that's been around since 1990. So 2020 was our 30th anniversary year, and uh, the, uh, we didn't expect what was going to happen, of course. But uh, what we do is we're an outreach uh, educational organization, and our mission is to promote human health, animal rights, and protection of the environment by means of whole food, uh, plant-based, vegan education. And uh, so all of the services that we provide are for everyone in the community. It's not limited to members. It's um, for everyone. And uh, we try to do as many educational events as we can. We have a monthly um, lecture uh, that's open to the public, both on Maui and on Oahu, where we bring in uh, visiting lecturers from uh, who are experts in their field, some very well known. And uh, also we have a monthly potluck on Kauai uh, where we uh, sometimes send those same speakers or they'll have uh, Kauai grown speakers speaking as well. And uh, so our three groups are all, you know, uh, just trying to do the same thing to help educate people. We I guess so. Our, that part of what we do now is on pause until we can get back to in-person events. So we can hardly wait. <laughs> but I can uh, we imagine. have. Yes, yeah. Lorraine, I, I do want to show slide number seven. Sure. It's a slide of a group of people that got together to listen to a very amazing speaker. Please tell us a little bit about this slide. Well, um, it's kind of he's kind of small on the left hand side. Um, that's Dr. Michael Greger, who's a, a best selling author uh, of the book How Not to Die and other similar books. Uh, on and he primarily concentrates on whole food plant based education, and he's got a great website called NutritionFacts.org, which I uh, highly recommend. It's free to everyone. Uh, ask any question you want about nutrition and health in general. And uh, more than likely, he'll have many, many um, videos, short videos about it. And they're really helpful. Like, highly, uh, you know, obviously he had a huge crowd waiting for him in Honolulu. We also had him speak at uh, Tripler Army Medical Center where Grace works as a, an emergency physician. And also at the John A. Burns School of Medicine and also on Maui, where they had a, a full capacity crowd of 300 as well, which is pretty big for Maui. So uh, we're so glad to be able to bring him here. And then the pandemic struck right afterwards. He was there in yes. February. 
Yes. Um, it's just fantastic what you do there. And as you mentioned, all uh, it's a volunteer based um, organization that you're running there. And I do yes. urge anyone who's interested in the plant based diet to go to the Vegetarian Hawaii um, Society of Hawaii and check out their website. There's so much information there. I think you'll uh, find it very useful if you're intending on at least venturing out in, onto a plant based diet. On that note, I do want to welcome Dr. O'Neill back. Dr. O'Neill, please uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. And before you go on, I do want to thank you so much for what you do, um, helping others during this pandemic. So I am an emergency physician. Um, I work in uh, primarily in the emergency room, but I have an interest in lifestyle medicine. And so um, I've been, you know, in my free time, I blog and I write about, you know, the things I see in the emergency room. I see a lot of diseases that are really preventable with lifestyle changes. And um, I, I try to tell my patients about it, but to get the word out, that's why I started my blog. And I have videos where I talk about how you can improve your lifestyle um, to kind of get rid of some of your medical problems. And I also, um, you know, I post on YouTube, I post on Instagram, and then um, I also write about it in my blog. So um, I've where can we find you and what is the name of your blog and your YouTube channel? So my blog is at graceinhawaii.com, but I call it 365 Days of Graceful Living. And <laughs> um, my YouTube channel is Graceful Living 365. And I'm at Instagram also Graceful Living 365. Mm -hmm. So most of the videos I post, I double post on Instagram and YouTube. However, this last video, I had a very long video about composting. So I posted it just on YouTube because it was too large to fit on Instagram. <laughs> but um, I've been posting a lot of things about, you know, I post things about exercise, about the plant-based diet, about, um, you know, different things that I, I did one uh, post on the organization here is B-E-A-C-H, Beach Hawaii, about how, you know, plastic in the oceans is damaging the environment. So those are my main interests. And you know, when I came here, I, you know, I was always interested in this stuff as I was growing up. So when I came here, I saw the flyers for Vegetarian Society. And um, that's how I got involved in Vegetarian Society. You know, I met Lorraine at the hospital, actually, at another <laughs> hospital I used to work at. And um, that's how we connected. So uh -huh. it's interesting, you know, also, <laughs> I do want the viewers to know that the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii is a vegan, in fact, a vegan society. Um, don't get the yes just so that <laughs> there's no misconceptions um it was named a, a you know quite some time ago as um Lorraine pointed out but it is a vegan plant-based society from day one from day one from day uh, one back in New York, that's right it was founded by four people who were very unhappy that Dr. John McDougall whom as you know who as you know is a pioneer in the field of uh plant-based uh, uh, diets to help with people's medical problems, to really help them uh, optimize their health. And he has done so much uh, here in Hawaii at first, and then uh, he moved to California and now he's in Oregon. But uh, yeah, he's written many um, books on the subject, which I think you'll find pretty good, um, pretty helpful. By the way, we also have a website, vsh.org, and you can find our, um, the lectures that we've presented there uh, in our video library and also on our YouTube channel, VSH Video. Uh, you can also find us on Channel 54 Olelo, uh, Channel 54 on, at 11 a.m. on Sundays and the third Tuesday every month at 6 p.m. And that's also on Olelo Channel 54. Um, Wonderful. That's Thank just you. part of what we do, yes. Oh, we also have a great... Um, discount program for our members. Uh, we have dozens and dozens of discounts at uh, many vegan and veg friendly businesses um, throughout the islands. Um, the Big Island, Maui, Kauai, and Oahu, and also um, some national and international discounts as well. So uh, all the more reason to uh, get on board the vegetarian um, Society of Hawaii train. Thank you for that information. Um, very useful. Let's just dive into this and talk about wh where we're going in 2021 with veg with veganism. Dr. O'Neill, what what are your thoughts? What, what what's this year looking like to you? We're just getting heading into a new year. People are starting to really 
um, think more carefully or seriously about their health given the pandemic and you know the situation we find us in so what what are your thoughts well, my thoughts are that I, I hope that people will consider a plant-based diet. I feel like at work, more and more people are considering it. So I think we're moving in the right direction. I think, unfortunately, a lot of the reasons why we have all these different you know, diseases like COVID or SARS-CoV-1 is because you know, we are in such close proximity to animals, which we were not originally in close proximity to. And, you know, they're in a concentrated space. And so um, this is how, you know, viruses are able to replicate, to mutate. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this is part of the reason we're having this problem. So if people could kind of get rid of their dependence on animal products, um, they could also, you know, improve their health and also decrease this pandemic problem we're, we're having right now. And we're going to get more and more of these problems, probably, um, if we continue to live the way that we are living. So, um, mm -hmm. and another thing is that not only is it causing the pandemic, our lifestyle, but it's also, you know, bringing about a lot of risk factors for getting really severe disease. That's what we're finding. The people who are consuming animal products, they have more propensity to have diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, heart disease, and all those things and more are risk factors for getting severe COVID disease. So if we could sort of knock out these diseases or at least minimize them, I mean, being vegan or being plant-based, you know, even if you eat really well, it's probably not like a hundred percent, but, you know, almost, you know, near probably a hundred percent eliminating a lot of these diseases. And if you could, you know, eliminate a lot of these diseases, then a lot of people might not get really sick from COVID and we wouldn't have, you know, 400,000 people dying in the United States. I mean, it's baffling that there's so many people dying. It's terrible. I know it's, it's sometimes, uh, it seems to people like us who are actually following a plant-based uh, diet and, and vegan lifestyle, it seems so easy to us. Like, what is it that people are not missing when it comes to just giving up their knives, like just letting, letting the animals be and, you know, have a, have a, a, a life that, that everyone deserves, that every living being oh. deserves. It, it, it is quite baffling. Um, I do want to mention an article that I was um, mentioned in as the source, which was on ideas.ted.com. The article just came out yesterday. It was written by uh, Sally Fitzgerald. And it's, it's the title of the article is Not Ready to be Vegan? Here are five tweaks to make your diet earth friendly. And she goes on about how plant-based food production typically requires less carbon emissions than livestock. For example, producing 100 grams of beef, beef protein releases 90 times more emissions than it takes to produce the same amount of pre pea protein. So people are going to argue back and forth, which is better, which is leaving more of a you know footprint on the environment. I'm, it, it is clear to everyone on this planet that a plant-based diet is is the way to go if that's if you're you know eco conscious and and ready to take that dive and we're going to talk about ways you can do it um stay tuned we do have to take a quick one minute break um and we'll be back after the, these messages Welcome back everyone to Lillian's Vegan World. I'm your host, Lillian Kumig. I am a vegan chef and author of the new, uh, newly released vegan cookbook, Hawaii, A Vegan Paradise. 
It's available worldwide uh, for Amazon and Barnes and Noble members. It's free shipping. It's available in stores all around Hawaii. And you can also get more information about the book and how it all came about by looking on my webpage, Lillian Vegan. I'm also on Instagram, Lillian Vegan under bar Chef Hawaii. And uh, I have a YouTube channel with over 200 recipe videos. So do check it out at Lillian Vegan. Uh, I would like to give a warm welcome back to my guests, Dr. Dr. O'Neill and Lorraine Sakaguchi. Welcome back. Nice to be so back. <laughs> we are talking about uh, the vegan veganism in 2021. Lorraine, what are your thoughts? My thoughts are that it is more relevant than ever before and more necessary. We are facing such huge climate change and the one thing that every person can do, no matter um, how unlike an activist they feel they are, they can just do this in their daily lives, just to go and eat a plant-based diet. And they've already made a huge contribution just by that one act alone. And it's a delicious diet. Uh, Lillian's recipes in her book, they're amazing. And uh, You'll, you don't, you're not going to miss anything in flavor. In fact, you'll find a lot more um, great gourmet dishes um, by following a plant-based diet, I believe, than with just a meat diet. So I, um, I agree. I, I absolutely agree. People are still under the, you know, have this notion that vegan food is boring. And I think no, uh, that's what really pushed me to write this book and, and go, look, guys, we eat more we eat more of a variety of um, healthy foods and, and foods that you haven't even heard of that are just great for the body um, and not harming anyone. And, uh, you know, it is something to be said of how far we've come with vegan food. And even when you consider all of the uh, substitutes out there for meat, we, we just have an abundance of non-dairy products, um, vegan cheeses everywhere mock meats, uh, meat substitutes. So mm -hmm. you can, you know, there's information out there everywhere if you really want to find it. I do want to go, I do want to sh show the third slide that we have, um, that Dr. O'Neill has prepped for us. What are risk factors for having severe COVID-19? Could you take us through this uh, briefly, Dr. Sure. O'Neill? I kind of touched on this a little bit before. Uh, so a lot of these risk factors are related to lifestyle uh, you know, people's lifestyles. So, you know, obviously smokers are at risk because COVID really affects the lungs. And so if you smoke, um, you are at risk. And, you know, if you have asthma, you will be at risk too, but definitely smoking is worse. And another thing, even with asthma, I've found that, you know, some patients we had in the Ornish program when I used to work there, there was a patient, she joined the Ornish program just for her husband and she happened to have asthma, but her asthma improved when she gave up animal products. You know, well, she, she was still having some dairy, but it still improved a lot just from that. So, you know, people don't realize, you know, if you just give up, even if you just give up dairy, I've had patients say that, just giving up dairy improves their asthma. So, um, you know, that, and then obviously the other risk factors, which um, I think is in another slide, but they're all part of the metabolic syndrome, you know, uh, hypertension, high cholesterol, diabetes, um, you know, which is insulin resistance. And also, you know, people think of it as like central obesity and it's a lot of um, intra-abdominal fat. So fat, like, you know, some people, they don't look like they're larger when you look at them, but they might have a lot of uh, intra-abdominal fat that you can't see. And that's the worst kind of fat for um, these risk factors. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, all these risk factors make COVID more severe for these people, you know, and then there's other ones that, you know, that people might not have control of like age, but I mean, a lot of these things you do have control of. So, you know, control what you can when you can control it. That's, yeah. that's the way I feel, right? Uh, that, so that's actually great advice. You know, my mother makes excuses all the time because of her age. Like every time it comes to saying, mom, come on, you know, you got to do a bit of exercise or clean up the diet a bit. Oh, no, I'm, I'm too old. I think we're at the stage now where, you know, 80 is the new 50. Yeah. 
80 year olds are walking around looking 30 look at Lorraine I don't even know how old she is but and I'm not going to ask but I bet you no I bet I you I bet you she looks a lot younger than she actually is I just turned 50 on Saturday I can't even oh. believe you look amazing Lily <laughs> thank you you I do as do. well do. Dr O'Neill I mean it just goes to show that there is something to be said about the plant-based diet that why people are not jumping to you know try it try it out and get on board is is kind of beyond me at times but the list goes on about you know what about why this is a great chance to do it i think at the beginning beginning of every year you go into a new year with a positive mindset and i think this is when you really have to you know grab that chance and and just go for it so there's lots of support out there, lots of things you can do, even just, I don't know, what, what's your advice on how to start it? Like go and watch some documentaries. There are so many awesome documentaries. One that keeps, um, that keeps popping back is uh, Game Changer. I think Game Changer is, okay. is literally a game changer when it comes to how people think about the plant-based diet because we are no longer living on you know alfalfa sprouts and brown rice <laughs> so this is uh, definitely a documentary i would hope that people check out what is your advice for starting um a vegan and plant-based diet lorraine well i think the game changer is, is a good movie especially for people who are um sports oriented and they can see that you <clears throat> excuse me you can <clears throat> uh, improve your uh, performance considerably in uh, many different ways, one of which is pretty hilarious if you watch the movie, um, but true. Mm -hmm. And um, one of our board members and a past president is Dr. Ruth Heydrich. And she was, um, she, she has won so many triathlete marathon and other um, medals. Uh, and this was after she changed to a plant-based diet. Uh, and the reason for that is because she met Dr. McDougall right after she had a mastectomy and uh, she, her breast cancer had metastasized to um, pretty much all the major organs, I think, in her body. Mm -hmm. But she changed over to a plant-based diet and she never looked back. It was several decades ago now. So wow. pretty amazing. There are um, stories like that all over the internet, aren't they? Aren't there? I mean, this, this is a, <laughs> this is clearly <laughs> a sign that uh, plant-based food is it should be looked at more more as medicine than food because it, yeah. it 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 is really. I mean, every time you nourish your body, you <laughs> have to think about what you're putting into it. In the in the TED Ideas TED dot com article that I was mentioned in, um, I did talk about mindfulness when you're eating now i, I want to ask dr dr o'neill about this because i i think we spoke about this briefly in a conversation before what is the difference between a plant-based diet versus a vegan lifestyle oh i mean a plant-based diet i mean i'd like to think of it as a whole foods plant-based diet and you're also aware of you know there's some things that are plant-based but they're not necessarily um that's great for your health, like um, coconut meat, unfortunately. I mean, I think it's okay to have once in a while or coconut milk, but it is very fatty. Um, but I think a vegan lifestyle implies that you're thinking about, um, and as some people do the plant-based um, lifestyle because they want to improve their health, which is fine. Uh, but I think with a vegan lifestyle, you're implying it's more like a uh, you know, encompasses more things. People are conscious about the environment and how, you know, our consumption of animal foods and products is harming our environment. People are also conscious of, you know, the ethical um, ideas behind veganism, and they're also um, conscious of health as well. So mm -hmm. that's what my interpretation is. I don't know what your interpretation is. But. Mm. No, I, I agree. And I think, um, what I tried to explain in my book is, is some of the reasons why people go on a plant-based diet or follow a vegan lifestyle. And there are so many things to consider, like, do you wear leather, leather clothing, leather shoes? Do you buy a leather bag? Do you have a leather couch sitting in your home? All these things start to, the more you delve into, the longer you are actually on a plant-based diet, 
I have to say, when in my own experience, it, it makes you become more mindful of everything in general. It, it's like an awakening. I've been vegan for 14 years and I can honestly say I've never, I've never felt more at peace with my um, beliefs and with how I'm living my life in regards to, you know, trying, trying to be uh, aware of other li living beings. And that includes, you know, a little bug coming to your home and not immediately grabbing something to go and smash it. My husband has learned how to catch <laughs> bugs and take them out and, and release them. <laughs> and he thinks it, he thinks it's the funniest thing, but um, he, he also now is aware of the fact that you don't need to end something's life just because it's tiny and it looks irrelevant in your, um, in your eyes. So there's so many things that kind of become very uh, enlightening. And another thing I, I have to say is being mindful when you eat. I cannot stand to eat in, like while I'm watching TV or doing something that's distracting. I like to make this moment of nourishing the body important. And I think when you start to do that, things happen in your mind where you start thinking, okay, so where did this come from? You trace it back, you know, and I hope that people start to become aware of that burger that they're munching on while they're talking about how much they love animals. A really yeah, I, good thing. Um, mindful eating um, is somewhat like that. Um, in fact, it is a kind of mindful eating. And we had a speaker come a few years ago who taught us to do more good and less harm. Basically, we're not perfect human beings, and uh, so we may fall a little in our, um, in our desire to eat fully vegan, to live a fully vegan lifestyle. But the more good you can do and the less harm, um, and forgive yourself along the way as well. But uh, I think you'll find that joy and that peace and also some good health along the way. Mm, absolutely. And what you said is correct. My husband isn't, isn't vegan, but our home is, and he respects um, our home uh -huh. and uh, doesn't bring anything non-vegan into it, including furniture. But, uh, and I always say to him too, he's on his own journey. Everyone is, and you don't just, you know, become vegan overnight. You have to be ready to, you know, mentally be ready and, and prepared to, you know, for a big change, for a really big, good change, if you can do it. So I, I agree, forgive yourself, you know, if you stray, don't be hard on yourself. No one's here to, to boss you around and tell you how to live your life. We're just giving you, you know, options here. And one of them is definitely a plant-based diet. So we are going to come to, unfortunately, the, the closing of the show. I do want both of you, if you don't mind, just to give a quick message to, to the viewers, Any, anything that comes to mind. Dr. O'Neill, I'll let you start. So for all you viewers out there, I think um, maybe if um, for 2021, you don't have a resolution yet, this is time to make a resolution and uh, for your health, for your longevity, for the planet. Um, you know, maybe if you don't feel like you can go completely plant-based, you can start a little bit, you know, maybe one day a week, do meatless Mondays and you can go from there. So that'd be my thing to encourage people Fantastic. to do. Fantastic. Yeah, I agree. Lorraine, go ahead. I would say join the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii. <laughs> and as Lillian says, don't worry if you're not a vegan or a vegetarian yet. We are open. Uh, our membership is open to everyone in the community. Uh, you, you can check it off uh, that you want to be an associate member because you're not vegetarian or vegan yet. <laughs> and uh, we have hundreds of members who are like that. So you won't be alone. And it's going to be fun, so much fun to explore uh, plant-based, uh, the wonders and the benefits of a plant-based diet. It's kinder to the animals, kinder to the planet and kinder to yourself. Thank you so much. On that note, I do want to thank you both so very much for joining the show. And to the viewers out there, I hope you consider um, everything that we put out there for you. Good luck on whatever your journey uh, leads to in this new 2021. Take care. See you soon again on Lillian's Vegan World. Aloha.